In this video, I'll show you how to paint the Vindicare Assassin Operative Umbral 6. There are lots of different elements and textures on this model, so make sure you keep watching until the end to get all the information. I really enjoyed painting this one, and I hope you do too. Let's get painting. To get started, I've primed everything in black, and I've also left off the two parts of the terrain feature so that it's easier to paint Umbral 6. We'll start off with that display feature first, and we're going to take some Balthazar Gold and thin this down like we normally would. We're then going to take a dry brush, and we're going to stipple Balthazar Gold all over both halves of the faceplate and don't forget to do the inside as well. We'll do exactly the same thing for the next step except we'll swap out the paint for Rune Lord Brass. What we're looking to do here is continue stippling and don't worry if you can see the undercoat underneath. The whole point of this is we're building up different textures and colours that will look really great when we start to wash and shadow it later on. We'll then use some Canoptec alloy to do the most raised edges and again we're focusing on that stippling motion building up that texture We're not looking for smooth coats at this point. We'll complete this bit of underpainting using some chrome from Vallejo Model Air. If you haven't got that, you can use Stormhose Silver. And what we're looking to do is catch those really sharp raised edges to give a nice shiny point that will really look good when we put a wash over everything next. To start that worn and verdigris effect, we're going to take some Coelia Green Shade and paint this over all of the metallics. It's really important that we don't let this pool and put it on fairly thinly. You don't need to thin it down, just don't have too much on your brush. When that first coat dries, we can then go back in with a second coat into those deeper recesses. With that Coelia green shade completely dry, you can see it's given us a really nice greeny worn look. So we want to enhance that verdigris effect a little bit now, and the colour we're going to use for that is Nylac Oxide. And what we're going to look to do is not have a huge amount on your brush, we're looking to stipple this over those raised edges where we'll get some of that fresh verdigris. Don't put too much on to start with, do it all over, see how you feel about it, and then maybe add some more later if you want. We'll move on to that broken halo next and we're going to base this using Retributor Armour. So just take your time, thin it down a little bit and you're probably going to need to do two or three really thin coats to make sure you don't obscure any detail and that you also get some nice coverage. It's worth saying that I'm using the same gold technique here on the rest of the model where there are gold elements. Now we want to keep this fairly dirty so we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade and we're going to paint this all over the gold parts. Now we don't want this to pool too heavily so just take your time and if it does start to pool use your brush to wick it away. Finally we'll add a little bit of a dull highlight with some Liberator Gold. Now I'm not putting this on in the traditional layer type style, I'm using this with a stippling motion so this will kind of give that worn look that fits in with the rest of the terrain. So just work your way around, spotting your brush all over it and if you want to put sharp edges you can but this is just going to give it a nice dull look. Where we've got some exposed metal strips coming out of the bottom of the model and out of the sides we'll make that rusty. So the first thing we need to do is take some typhus corrosion and paint this all over those areas. Now don't put it on too thick to start with, you can always build it up but it's really important that you let it dry thoroughly. Then dry brush some riser rust all over that typhus corrosion. Make sure that you only put a little bit on to start with so you can gauge how orange it's going to look. If you want it to be more oxidized and more orange then simply do more layers of dry brushing. We'll move on to all of the silver parts next and the colorway new to this is lead belcher so we've got those two stylish ones which hold the terrain piece up and we've also got little bits across the model such as the rifle scope, the pistol and parts of the mask. Once that's dry we'll take some null oil and wash all of the silver parts. Now I've got the new null oil if you've got the old one that doesn't matter it'll work exactly the same so just make sure you cover everything and let them dry thoroughly before we go on to the next step. I want to add some rust to the stanchions so to do that I'm going to take some scrag brown and I'm going to thin this down quite a bit so I've probably brought out two or three parts water to paint. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off on some tissue paper then I'm going to paint it into the recesses and around all the rivets and that when it dries will give you a really nice bright browny rust effect. If you want it to be brighter then just add a second or third coat. For the rest of the silver we'll take some chrome or stormhose silver whichever you have and we'll just use this to highlight those sharp edges using the brush. Now we don't have to do too much with this because remember he's a sniper he's hidden so he doesn't want to be too shiny. It's a good time now to paint the mask on the sniper's face because if we make any mistakes we can easily paint over it in the next steps. So I'm going to take some Corax white, thin it down a little bit and I'm going to paint the mask. I'm also going to paint those eye sockets. Now this is going to probably need two coats to cover so just take your time and try not to make any mistakes over stuff you've already finished. I'll then shade that white using Soul Blight Grey. Now you can use Apothecary White if you have that but I quite like the effect from Soul Blight Grey so I'm going to get it into all those recesses. To finish the mask I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to use Bold Titanium White from Procryl. You can use any white paint that you prefer and I'm just catching all those raised edges and I'm also going to paint inside those eye lenses leaving a little bit in the recesses. 
To finish those lenses, just take some Bal Red contrast paint and paint them into the recesses. Now, try and take your time with this, but if you do make any mistakes, don't worry, it's really easy to tidy up with that bold titanium white. We'll move on to base coating all the elements on the body of the sniper next. So the first thing we're gonna do is take corn red and use this to paint all of the leather straps. Once we've got those leather straps finished, we're then gonna take some dryer bark and use this to paint all of the leather pouches, such as the holster and the pouches he's got on his legs and around his waist. Finally, we'll take some screamer pink and use this to paint the little tassel coming off his combat knife. We'll then shade all of these areas using Nuln Oil. Now, try not to get this on the bodysuit because it will alter the finish on the suit. But if you do, don't worry, you can always just paint over it with black before well, we get into painting that armour. To start bringing these colours back up, we'll go back to the bases that we used. So for the red leather, it's corn red. For the brown leather, it's dried bark. And for the tassel on the combat knife, it's screamer pink. To highlight the red leather, the first colour we're going to use is Waz Darker Red. And what we're looking to do is not put too much on, but just focus this around those raised areas and the edges. Finally, we'll put an extreme highlight of Squig Orange. And this is just for those areas that catch the most light. So make sure you haven't got too much on your brush and take your time. To highlight all of the brown leather, the colour we're going to use is Gothor Brown. Now we don't want to have too much on our brush and all we're looking to do is catch those sharp edges. So use the side of your brush, the sharp edge and you'll get a nice crisp highlight. Lastly, take some Pink Horror and use this to highlight that tassel. Now there's some texture in there so what you can do is make sure you've got very little on your brush and just move it gently across catching those raised edges and that'll give you a nice highlight. Next up, it's that sniper rifle. So let's base all of it, apart from the bits we finished silver and the bits which are going to be black, such as the silencer on the front in Incubi Darkness. The first highlight is going to be with Cabalite Green and we're looking to get a nice sharp edge here. So we're going to do this the same way we've done all the other sharp edges, using a nice point on our brush, not too much paint, and just running it along that edge to get a really nice sharp highlight. We'll finish off the casing using Cybrite Green. Now this is a much brighter green so we want to get a nice thin highlight, preferably inside that Cabalite Green, and this will really make that rifle pop on the tabletop. Next up, we'll paint the scope and the silencer barrel on the sniper. Now, this is going to be a neutral black, which is different to how we're going to do the skin suit next. The first colour we're going to use is Eshin Grey. And we're going to use this just along that plane of light you can see being reflected off my desk lamp. So it's nice and easy, nice and straightforward. To finish off that neutral grey element, we're going to take some Dawnstone. And again, we're just going to paint this inside that Eshin Grey highlight. And this will just give it a little bit of sharpness. We're going to use around the edge of that barrel as well. And this will give us a really great effect. Let's move on to the skin suit, which is the last thing we're going to do on the model. So if you haven't already, correct any mistakes using black. And then we're going to add a mix of black and dark reaper, about one to one. And we're going to use this as the first highlight. And we're not going to worry about any edge highlights. We're just going to paint all of the parts apart from those in the recesses. Next up, use pure dark reaper. And we're looking to do the same sort of thing here, where we're doing area highlights and volumetric highlights as opposed to any sharp edge highlights. So just work your way around and pick up any of those elements that are going to be on display. We'll do the same using Thunderhawk Blue, except we're looking to get more towards that sharp line highlight now, and making sure that we only catch those raised edges on the skin suit. So if you're not sure, check the box art, watch the video, and then we'll get onto the final highlight next. And the final highlight is going to be with some Fenrisian Grey, and we're looking to just catch those sharpest edges as well as those most raised points. So we've got parts of the knuckles, we've got around the gloves, and then we've also got some spot highlights on the shoulders, the bicep, and of course the top of the head. And there we go, Operative Umbral 6 is ready for the tabletop or even your display cabinet. A huge thank you to all my patrons who make this channel possible. You can support me for just a small amount using the links in the description. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check out my other content. I'll see you next time.